So I've had some requests on uh, more information about my uh, conversion I did on my air compressor. And it was originally just one of these, uh, I believe, Husky store branded air compressors with a three horsepower, you know, single phase uh, 120 motor on it and small head. And it worked okay for years, just use it for minor automotive and whatnot. But in the shop, uh, with the addition of the plasma table, a lot more tools, et cetera, et cetera, I just needed a higher output. And I really couldn't find what I wanted to get for a reasonable price. So I started putting my own together. So what I've got is this three-phase, five-horse motor, and I bought a new pump head. Okay, the pump head I got from Harbor Freight uh, with a 20% off coupon. I can't remember how much it was, but uh, sub $200. I think it was one and a half, right around there. Uh, the motor I found online uh, used, you know, through uh, Facebook Marketplace. Got that for $200. So now I had a motor and a pump, right? But they weren't timed um, by the, the speeds here, right? So the pump has a maximum rotation, I think, of 1,000 or 1,100 RPM. And it puts out, uh, oh God, please don't quote me. You can go look. It's the larger one Harbor Freight has. But it puts out plenty of air for everything in the shop. Um, I, I could run just the pump on my uh, plasma table and run tools in the shop uh, without even using the tank. Uh, it just puts out tons of air. So I've got that going. It's much quieter than the original system as well. So that made a big difference. Uh, but to address the timing issue, to get this run at the right RPM and not overdrive or underdrive the pump, uh, and the fact that I have a three-phase motor, I had to add this VFD. So the VFD, uh, again, uh, that was Amazon, and it was the two to three hundred dollar range. So let's say three hundred dollars. Let's go on the high end here. I got three hundred into that, uh, two hundred in the motor. So we got five hundred, six fifty to seven hundred for the whole setup. I had to fabricate some mounts and a few other pieces. Uh, so that was pretty inexpensive. Uh, when I look at any similar capacity air compressor, they were well over $1,000. Uh, most of them closer to the $1,500, $2,000 range. And I just didn't want to spend that when I could do this myself and get a lot more functionality out of this than what I could buy. So, um, by the way, this is sitting on its side. It was a vertical, but this head is so big, I didn't want that much weight on top. So I converted it to a horizontal compressor. Okay. All right. So with that, into the rest of my system. So what I've got here now is the air comes out of the compressor, goes up to this line through my dryer. And this is a uh, heavy-duty transmission cooler with some high-speed PC fans that come on. Then it comes out of the dryer, all right, goes through a water catch into the tank. All right, there, I catch a considerable amount of water here while it's running. It's not making it into the tank. Then when using the compressor, the air comes out feeds into my system through my, you know, standard filtration, oil, water, and then a final dryer, and feeds out to a PEX line that runs through my whole shop. So that's pretty much the entire system. Uh, the fan kicks on when the motor kicks on from the VFD. So the VFD is triggered by the original pressure switch. There's no power running through this pressure switch. This is just dry contacts, basically. And since it has two sides, because it was a, you know, a, a, a two-legged pressure switch, a neutral and a hot, uh, each side was independent. So I took one side and used it as the switch telling the VFD when to come on. So right now everything is just turned off, and we'll turn it on in a minute so you can hear that. The other side I used as a contact for the fan. So that way the, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. No, I did not. Uh, I only have one side used on here. I, I did it that way originally, and then I subsequently changed it. So you can see this small wire leading out. That's the signal wire that goes to the VFD, telling the VFD that the pressure switch has requested pressure. So the VFD then comes on, and I tap the fans on the legs that are feeding the air compressor. So the fans come on when the compressor comes on. Uh, I'll probably change that in the future to keep them running a little bit longer after the compressor, just to keep it uh, a little cooler in there. But it works really, really well as is. So the only thing I had to do with the fans, and this is great, uh, PC fans generally are 120 to 240 volt. So whatever you're going to plug them into works. Uh, the VFD output, you have a 208 leg and two 120 legs. So between the two 120 legs, you can get 240 into the fans. Uh, you pick a, you know, a, one, a 110 in a ground, you can get 110 into the fans, whatever you want to do. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and show you some of the benefits of going this route. So let me come down here. Actually, I'm going to let you watch the VFD. There we go. Now, I also 
also have adjustable speed. And I can turn that way down. And that way when I'm across the shop, uh, it's significantly quieter. I don't know how it's gonna come through on the phone, but this is a lot quieter across the shop than running at full speed. So if I'm just running the air chuck on the mill or a few other things, uh, and I don't need a lot of air, that's great. When I want a lot of air, I'm gonna run the plasma table. I'll just turn it back up again. And I added a, uh, a tachometer in here, so I know the speed that the motor is going at. But that was just an add-on by me. And that's my air compressor setup. So if anybody's got any more questions, just uh, feel free to let me know.